Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Pow, and today I'm doing week 19 of my 2020 reads. This week I finished five books, almost all of which were actually on my TBR. So first, let me talk about three books that I finished, which were on my March extended into April monthly priority TBR for Indian and Middle Eastern heritage. So the first of these is Our Women on the Ground, edited by Zahra Hankir. This is a collection of nonfiction essays by Arab women reporters on their experiences reporting in the Middle East. I really enjoyed this collection and I thought it did such a good job of presenting so many different types of experiences. I loved the variety of women and reporters that were included in this. So. The women themselves were a mixture of people who grew up in the Middle East and continued to report there, of women who grew up in the Middle East but then immigrated to other countries, of women who were the children of immigrants. It had a really interesting mixture of experiences in terms of how connected those people were to the Middle East. It also had a good representation of different types of reporting. You had women who were bloggers who just got um, interested in political activism. You had women who were um, photojournalists who kind of explored what was going on politically through their photos. You had women who were TV reporters, women who were newspaper uh, editors. You had so many different experiences. So I really liked all of that variety as well as the variety of countries. Um, it wasn't just, you know, Iran, Iraq, Syria, but also a lot of other places, Lebanon and Palestine and Yemen and so many different countries. So I really, really enjoyed all of that variety. I also thought that the personality of the reporters varied. There were ones who had all of this passion and they wanted to be on the front lines. There were other women who wanted to present things, wanted to tell the truth, but also were very cautious when it came to endangering their lives or their families' lives. There were women who kind of didn't want to deal with any of the societal expectations of the Middle East. There were other women who very much felt themselves involved in those societal expectations and wanted to conform to some degree, but didn't want to be limited in terms of their careers. It was just such an interesting variety of experiences. And I learned so, so much, especially about the Arab Spring. A lot of these women were reporting around the Arab Spring, and that was just a big theme through throughout all of these was how things changed in the Middle East at that point and how especially reporting changed as well. A lot of the women got involved in reporting or had the way that they report change because of that. It was just really a fascinating mixture of culture, of identity, and of politics and history and war. Um, there were also just so many moving things about the way that women dealt with um, interacting with their families and also dealt with interacting with their sources and contacts. One of the most heartbreaking things was just so many of these reporters would have contacts in different countries that they would uh, talk with, especially over things like Skype when the phone lines were cut down or um, you know travel to other countries became not allowed by governments. Um, and so they'd have these contacts on Skype, except that so many of them were killed in the different you know, wars and political unrest that over time they had so many Skype names that they just had notes on about how that person died. And it was just so many moving things in this collection of essays and just so, so great to read. Um, I don't think that every essay was as powerful, but I did think that overall the collection was really, really strong. So I gave it four and a half out of five stars and I definitely recommend picking it up. Next, I finished Halal If You Hear Me, which is The Breakbeat Poets, Volume 3, edited by Fatima Asgar and Sophia El Hilo. So this is a really interesting collection of poetry and essays by various Muslim women, uh, non-binary, um, trans, and queer people. So this collection really explores Muslim identity through poetry and essays. I love identity 
identity, cultural, political poetry, and this really worked for that. Um, I especially loved just the ways that people were exploring how they were Muslim, how they identified with being Muslim while not necessarily fitting into that narrow little box that people think of when they think of Muslim identity. Um, there were some really great poems. I really especially liked, there were some poems about being like a black American Muslim and how that's a very different experience, but still valid. There was a lot in this about validity, about claiming your Muslim identity, even if you're queer, even if you're trans, even if, you're in some way different um, about celebrating all the things that make you Muslim and all of the things that are different about you. And it was just really a very powerful poetry collection because of that embracing of the whole, all the parts of uh, each author's identities. It had so many different contributors as well. It had so, so many tons of different people writing poetry, writing essays. I also really, really liked the essays. I think I just really like nonfiction essays about identity. Um, for the poetry, there was definitely some of it that really, really spoke to me. Some of it that didn't quite as much connect with me, but this is very common in poetry. Uh, I think poetry is so personal and so emotional that there are certain ones that you connect with deeply and other ones not so much. Um, the book definitely does have a little bit of some poems and essays are a little bit more graphic um, and definitely sexuality is very explored here. So just if you're going into that, um, I think you should be aware that some of the content is a little explicit, but I just thought that this was such a fascinating collection and such good insight into all of the different ways um, somebody can be Muslim. I really enjoyed this and I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I finished Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, which is a fantasy inspired by Mughal India. I love fantasies that are inspired by various world mythologies, and this one really delivered. It had excellent world building and such a cool magic system. I especially like that part of the magic system in here is inspired by Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam is a classical Indian religious dance that is extremely beautiful. I really, really love it. Um, and is a way to sort of tell religious stories and worship. I love that that was the inspiration for some of the magic in this. I, I just, it's, it's a personal favorite of mine, so I loved seeing that here. I also just loved the way that this took place in a desert, and there was so much in here about um, desert magic and oases and these sorts of things. The magic system in this was very cool. The world building itself was really fascinating because it is based on Indian history. Um, India was for really most of its history, not one country, but rather many separate little kingdoms. Although the Mughals, kind of coming from the Mongols, had taken over for a period of a few hundred years and uh, united different states of India through kind of imperial force. And I like that this book takes a look at that period in Indian history, I mean, through a fantastical lens, and really explores the idea of imperialism and what that means for the original local populations. There's so much in here about the oppression of local populations and about the way that the imperial forces um, will kind of make those local populations a, a lower caste. And there's a lot in this about colorism, about you know the lighter skin of the imperials being seen as more favorable. There's a lot in this about just prejudice and bias. So I loved those aspects of this story. It was so cool. And one of the aspects that was a little bit of a surprise for me that I ended up really loving is that this book has a strong romantic component as well. And since I love romances and I love fantasy, I was very happy to see these two paired, especially because I could get behind the romance. It's a very sweet one. Um, so there's just so much in this that I really enjoyed. There's also so many strong female characters. There's so much in here that is about politics and about power and about women who are fighting for destinies and trying to protect themselves 
themselves, their heritage, their culture. There's just so much in here that is really, really powerful. Um, I did find that there were a couple of times where some of the characters made foolish decisions and there were a couple of instances where it got just a little bit melodramatic for me. But other than that, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. I definitely want to pick up the sequel um, or the companion novel. And I gave this four and a half out of five stars and I do highly recommend it. Next, I finished a book that wasn't on my TBR, but was something that Sush had been wanting to read to me for a while, which was The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. Sush and I both really enjoy T. Kingfisher's fantasy, so he'd been wanting to read this book to me for a while because he'd read it and wanted to share. Um, so the book basically is a contemporary horror, and it's about a woman whose grandmother dies, and she has to go and clear out her cabin in the woods, um, but there's some creepy stuff in the woods. So so this book, I really enjoyed the first part. Um, it had a lot of T. Kingfisher's humor and sort of internal monologues that I find so, so funny. It also just had kind of a neat, creepy vibe and some interesting um, commentary on the original horror uh, work that this was based on. It's sort of a satire of that, and I really liked those satire aspects. Um, but as we got further into the story, it sort of deteriorated for me because it just became an idiot plot. Um, and I'm finding that I have very little patience with idiot plots right now. So basically stories where the plot revolves around characters making stupid decisions, where if they just didn't make those stupid decisions, everything would have been fine. And so there were just so many points in this where the main character should have just said, you know what, actually, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to stay in this cabin anymore. And she didn't make those decisions. Um, so she kept getting herself into worse and worse trouble. And I just, I had very little compassion for that, very little empathy. Um, also, I didn't necessarily find this book all that scary. Um, some of the things in the beginning were creepy, but the further we went, I just, I, I don't know. I just didn't find myself that engaged. So, you know, it was okay. Um, overall, I gave it three stars. I do really like T. Kingfisher's characters and I liked the humor, but I just wasn't that engaged in the story and I got annoyed with the bad decisions. And lastly, I finished a book that is on my May TBR, which was The Best We Could Do by Thibli. This is a graphic memoir slash oral history of Bui and her family's experiences as refugees from Vietnam in the 1970s. This book really explores both um, this kind of refugee immigrant experience as well as the generational trauma that is the result of that kind of experience. I think that it was absolutely beautiful. I was so, so moved by this, and I've actually done a standalone review, which I'll put up later this week, because I just really want to share how meaningful and impactful that story was. Um, I gave it five out of five stars, and I highly recommend it. Okay, so those are all of the books that I finished this week, which was quite a lot, although many of them I had started weeks before and was just finally finishing up. I was so glad to finish up so many of the books that I'd had on my March into April TBR. I did want to mention that there is one other book that I decided to pause this week. So not a DNF, not an NFN, but a pause. So a pause for me is something where I am enjoying the book. I 100% intend to continue reading the book, just not right now. Um, so I decided to pause A Place for Us by Fatima Farhin Mirza, which is sort of um, a family saga about some Indian immigrants to the US and some of the difficulties that they have in family dynamics and interactions. I was definitely enjoying this, but I'm at 33% and I had a hard cutoff of this week was the last week I was going to continue with any of my March into April and into the beginning of May um, priority for Indian and Middle Eastern heritage. Um, so that's the reason why I decided to pause that. I will come back to it at some point. I definitely was enjoying it and want to finish it. Just I have other books that I want to focus on for now. So if you have read any of the books that I've mentioned, if you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, later on this week, I will have a review going up of The Best We Could Do by Thie Bui, and I will also have a wrap up for my March into April monthly priority of Indian and Middle Eastern heritage. So look forward to those if you're interested, and I will talk to you later.